Hello and welcome to Instant Transmission, a podcast where we discuss everything Dragon Ball and why nothing bad will happen to any of my favorite characters tonight. Frieza is on the rampage and hope looks bleak for our heroes as we continue our coverage of Dragon Ball Z Kai. Will the universe's most evil, most tyrant, evil tyrant defeat our heroes? Will Goku finish his bath in time to save the day? Find out on tonight's episode of Instant Transmission. I'm your host, Aiden, and once again, I'm joined by my co-host, Todd. Hi! Tonight, we'll be covering Kai's episodes 40 through 47, as our heroes begin realizing the true depths of Frieza's power through his transformations. Piccolo's life hangs by a thread as Frieza tortures our Namekian, who is all but unable to fight any longer. Gohan looks on in horror as his dear friend Mr. Piccolo cries out in pain right before his very eyes, and Krillin hesitates to assist Vegeta with a desperate plan to increase his power. And with all that covered, was there anything you wanted to add before we got things started, Todd? I don't think so. I'm ready to dive right in. All right. Well, tonight's episode begins with episode 40, Frieza's final super transformation. The terror greater than hell starts now. Oh, then that's a powerful title. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And this one's great because we start, we pick up where we left off last with Frieza in his third form. Now giving the death beam barrage to Piccolo. And this is the moment that Gohan rushes in to try to save Piccolo. Yeah, and I love this because there's so much, I guess, character happening with all of our characters all in one scene, right? It's Piccolo trying to be the brave hero on his own and kind of being beaten down. It's Frieza using a signature technique where it's less about defeating your opponent and more about inflicting maximum pain. And it's Gohan just reaching in and finding that depth of power that only, I guess, rage or care for his friends can really draw out. It's it's pretty much Dragon Ball and its peak form. Yeah, those are those are all really great points. I think particularly Frieza and Gohan here I like because Gohan, we're seeing this is kind of repeating his character arc throughout the the Namek saga where in the Saiyan saga Gohan was too afraid to really do anything in the fights that he was uh, being forced into more or less but throughout pretty much the entire Namek arc Gohan shown himself to be brave enough to actually fight to try to save his friends in fact like in this moment, he gets a significant power boost. And then the other little detail I really like about Frieza here is that this just shows how sadistic Frieza is as he just tears Piccolo apart. Yeah, and you can tell that Frieza could end this fight whenever he wanted to. Frieza's just on a completely different planet than everybody else. Well, actually, they're all Namek, but you get what I mean. And <laughs> Frieza's just choosing to draw out this fight and just... I guess, have the most fun possible. Yeah, and we're going to see him express that even further here in a moment. But first, we get to see Gohan kind of dive in, attacking Frieza with a few physical attacks, but then using a supercharged key blast to attack Frieza, pushing this third form Frieza back down towards the ground. Frieza only able to actually get any leverage once his tail pushes against the ground and then he lifts it up into the air, launching it back at Gohan. Yeah, and I love the tremendous weight you feel during the struggle as Frieza kind of pushes back on what what is a surprising amount of strength shown by this young child. And as this beam comes flying back towards Gohan, well a key blast comes in from the side to kind of save the day from his own blast as Piccolo musters up just enough strength to kind of save his, his pupil. Yeah, this is a great moment. I mean, Piccolo always looking out for Gohan. I think the important detail here too is, I mean, Gohan basically gets a rage boost when he sees his friends in danger, but this is just after Gohan getting healed by Dende, so getting another Zenkai boost due to his 
Saiyan heritage. And that's pretty much the only reason he was able to really put any sort of fight up against third form Frieza. Yeah, it's Gohan's been able to kind of keep up with, I mean, these are titans that he's been fighting with as as a mere child right and while he's not really able to fight them for any long term i guess engagement he shown he keeps showing these bursts of strength where he keeps up or even surpasses these opponents that he's been going up against yeah absolutely and it's at this moment vegeta uses that as incentive as he's telling krillin I want you to blast me as hard as you can. <laughs> Can't you see when a Saiyan comes back from the brink of death, they get vastly stronger and we're about to abuse that maliciously. I know. I think, I think uh, last episode of instant transmission, I called it the Saiyan exploit and oh, yeah. Vegeta is absolutely the type of, of player who would abuse an exploit as much as he could. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I mean, he wants to win. And uh, admittedly, his life and all their lives are on the line. So if that were me, I'd be abusing the shit out of that too. <laughs> yeah, and Krillin even mentions, like, I, you're so strong, I don't even know if I could hurt you. And this is, I've suspected this, but they actually say it in Kai. He mentions that he's going to lower his defenses so even somebody like Krillin could hurt him. So it's, I wanted to bring this up because we've seen a few moments throughout Dragon Ball where I've had some head scratching moments. Like in the Cell Saga, there's a moment where Krillin throws a rock at Goku and it hits him in the head and like it hurts Goku, which blows my mind. Um, in Super, when Goku gets shot with this piddly little like laser and it like nearly kills him and mortally wounds him. I mean, there's all these little moments where you're just like, well, this guy is pretty much a god and they're being hurt by or he's being hurt by these little piddly things well here it is and i guess at least the english dub where they mention that their defenses can be raised and lowered and that's how they're able to withstand these attacks so if you catch someone with their guard down even a low level attack would probably kill them that's a great point uh it, it, i mean it almost fixes retroactively retroactively because it's technically this in the timeline happens yep. before super but kai came out after it's a it's a mess uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it fixes like a lot of people had issue with that in super when goku gets blasted by a little ray gun and people are like that wouldn't hurt him but yeah you you make a really good point if if their guard is down they can be injured by a rock or a ray gun or whatever. <laughs> I love it. I think this should be a thing. I absolutely think that this should be a thing. I'm glad they put it in the words. Now we can put to bed a lot of those weird little things. It's if they're not paying attention, anything could freaking a guy with a gun could kill them. Like it's <laughs> everything's a danger if they don't have their guard up and their stance ready or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's even uh, it's even when like my in super tries to shoot uh, Goku Black with a gun like I mean you know like you said even a gun could hurt them so that's a good point I'm glad that you brought that up um, but before I want to analyze that to death <laughs> let's move forward yes <laughs> as now Frieza is saying uh, he's basically expressing I could kill all of you in this form if I wanted to but I think it would be more fun to give you a true sense of fear. So I'm going to show you my final form. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot that's kind of going on at once towards the latter half of this episode. Frieza decides to unveil his, his final, final form as far as we know. And I mean, it's a pretty cool transformation. I'll give it that. Um, we see what was once a like large, powerful figure with monstrous features kind of compact and become this smaller, slimmer, more streamlined version of what Frieza's first form kind of looked like. And there's almost like this kind of brand new iPod kind of shine to it that just, I don't know, man, it pops. I honestly, I love this transformation because we, I, I mean, it's, this is even in Kai with this being a more condensed version. This is a lengthier transformation. Frieza is kind of yelling and screaming for a while, but you see cracks going up his body and 
his body's glowing almost this pink color and then when it finally bursts out the the whole his whole body like this outer shell just cracks and breaks away revealing the the sleek iform phone iphone form the iform <laughs> iform uh underneath which is just it, it's super cool i really like this transformation it's super fun i also like how it breaks away from how all the previous transformations were kind of going where frieza kept getting a little bigger a little bulkier just a little bit more demonic i guess and then in this final form it's like this really condensed just I, I don't know. It really breaks the mold. And you can tell that this is something special compared to everything else we've seen. Yeah, absolutely. While this is going on, our heroes are kind of trying to rally and collect themselves. Vegeta finally convinces Krillin to blast him with everything he has after Krillin gives him like a little pea shooter blast to start, uh, but does put a hole through Vegeta's stomach which I did want to point out is censored in Kai. I did not like that part. Uh, I thought so. It looked censored. It looked just like, like what, like black mush. Yeah. They just kind of cover it up. Like uh, they actually, I think even draw his abs in there again, which it should just be. (laughs) Yeah. It should just be a hole through his stomach. Um, So I'm still frustrated by the, the censorship that we get in Kai, but uh, it does result in Dende, First, initially denying Vegeta, saying, I'm not going to heal you. You've murdered dozens of my people. Uh, And so Dende goes over and is like, I'll heal you, Mr. Nail Piccolo. (laughs) (laughs) Which I thought was hilarious. And it's right within character, right? Vegeta, he's going to have to sit there and suffer while he uh, pays for, for his sins. At least for a little bit, because... Nail slash Piccolo understands just how dire the situation is. And even he's like, yeah, go ahead and and heal up Vegeta because we need him and I'll deal with him later. (laughs) Yeah, they're basically like, maybe all of us together can beat Frieza. And then, you know, Vegeta's the lesser of two evils at that point. So Vegeta gets back up. Our heroes kind of rally a little bit. And as Frieza steps forward, kind of out of the the dust that was kicked up from the transformation, um, there's really no downtime. Frieza decides to lift up a finger, pick a target, and fire this little energy ray that flies past everybody's heads, except for Dende, who's immediately taken from the fight. And... It's at this point where the music kind of kicks up and really starts setting the tone. I like their music choice here with it's kind of this heavy metal riff with like a really big emphasis on the bass tones. It feels deep and heavy and I love it. I've got I've got a good handful of notes about the music because they've they've got some interesting choices in in this part of the arc. Uh, but yeah, I I kind of felt the same way. I think they they particularly pick up with that music as Gohan again outraged at you know one of his friends being hurt in this moment, Dende being killed outright by Frieza. Gohan charges and attacks, and Krillin and Piccolo are quick on his heels to help Gohan. However, none of them can land a single hit on Frieza as Frieza is just way too fast and dodges everything they have to throw at him. Yeah, and Frieza just treating it like child's play, not even opening his eyes as he dances around each and every attack, decides that he's actually kind of done playing with them. And the episode ends with Frieza launching a key blast that's barreling down on the defenseless Gohan. And... I think that's going to take us right in episode 41, which is the moment we've waited for. Son Goku is revived. And surprise, surprise, uh, Gohan's life is saved by somebody else again, but it's saved by Vegeta, who leaps into action, striking Gohan in the back of the head. So he goes face first into the dirt, but saves him from the blast. This is great. I mean, Gohan even gets up saying, 
Thank you, Vegeta. You saved me again, because this is not the first time Vegeta has saved Gohan, uh, which is just is kind of hilarious when you think about the fact that Vegeta absolutely hates Goku and has continued to save his son multiple times. His son's been a, a useful pawn the entire time of Nam. You can't just give up a good piece, right? You're not going to just give away a pawn. There's something there about the fact that Gohan is half Saiyan. I think that Vegeta not only views him as a valuable pawn, but also there's maybe a measure of his Saiyan pride that I think connects with Gohan in some strange way. <laughs> He's like, I hate you, but you're still a Saiyan. So I hate you a little less. Yeah, basically <laughs> like you're not as bad as all the other shitty people that I hate. <laughs> well, I'm glad that Vegeta kicked Gohan out of the way because um, the entire horizon is basically evaporated from this little key blast that Frieza put no effort into and everybody's pretty much stunned. Yeah, this is awesome. It's also interesting to see where the episode breaks are in Kai, because this is this is not a natural or was not originally a natural episode break. But I think this was this was a good one. There's a couple other ones that feel a little bit awkward, I guess. Forced. But yeah, a little bit forced. Uh, but they did a good good job here. And we kind of move forward with Vegeta saying. Hey, I'm going to fight Frieza now because I'm a Super Saiyan. Okay, I, I want to point out, and I think I have a note here later where I was going to talk about this, but the Super Saiyan speech thing didn't bother me when there's like a hundred more episodes that they're spread out across. <laughs> In Kai, because they're happening like every three or four episodes, like you really notice it. Like the, the <laughs> DBZ abridged, joke definitely hits hard here it almost feels like that in db like it almost feels the same as dbz abridged because it's so frequent in such a short period of time of vegeta <laughs> just being like hey i'm a super saiyan hey no really i'm a super saiyan this time guys <laughs> because you're not dealing with your average saiyan warrior <laughs> <laughs> like it's it i mean i don't remember it being like this in original dragon ball z but in kai i mean come on yeah it I don't think it felt that way. I think, like you said, because there's so many more episodes in between, you you start to forget about it. But this is like every couple of episodes, but you just <laughs> like, I'm a Super Saiyan. Uh, it is cop. Like, it, it's at the point now where I'm just hearing the jokes in my head. And it's it's funny to me. I understand why they didn't cut it, because whenever he makes that speech, it's usually before he's about to do something badass. Right. And so, like, do you just dub over it? Do you put in some BS or do you leave it because that's how it kind of was in the original? Ugh. I think it's I, I agree with you. I think it's good to leave it in. I almost feel like it's the opposite, though, where almost every time that he says it, he has about five seconds of doing something badass and then gets his ass <laughs> handed to that's him. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably more correct. <laughs> so anyway, Vegeta gives his Super Saiyan speech um, and we see him like flexing his muscles and charging up and we get some kind of retro sounding rock music kicking in. I don't know how you feel about this music, but it, it felt like a throwback to me. They're like, it feels like they're trying to, like you're saying is they're trying to give kind of a nineties feel to it. All of these songs too are, while you can't hear it very well, they're all in Japanese. And the interesting part is these are not as I'm fairly certain because I went back and checked. These are not the original Japanese songs. They're just different Japanese songs they threw in, but they, they give a good feel for it. So Oh, okay. Neat. <laughs> it was weird. I don't know why they decided to do that for the English dub, but I like it. Yeah, I mean, I was I was fine with this one. I really like the heavy bass of the the previous one. I thought that one like really got me going. This one I was fine with because it definitely it was a throwback for me. Yeah. This one feels a little mediocre. I like the previous one. There's one later that I really like that I'm definitely going to point out, but Ooh. the the power up scene here, I actually really enjoy. Uh, this is Vegeta's five seconds of badassery as you get to see kind of like this blue orb of key circle around his body as he's screaming and powering up. 
Uh, you get to see like lightning surge across his body and the, the delivery. I do have a note here, here too, that this is, I think one of the only points in all of Kai where I think the touch-ups actually improved the scene a little bit. You know what? I didn't notice the touch-ups in this one. So maybe they, they were actually well done this time. There's some later ones that, oh boy. <laughs> I mean, it, it, at this point, if there are touch-ups, it's probably making the scene worse. Um, I'm only bringing it up when it makes the scene either like way worse, or in this case, I actually think they did a decent job with the touch-ups. And I don't think it was necessarily intentional. It's just the things that they decided to touch up or the brighter elements of the scene anyway. And so it helped really make them pop and stand out. And I mean, I, I'll tip the cap. They chose the correct things to touch up in the sequence. See, I I was so busy looking at the sequence and being like, wow, that looks really good. I didn't even notice that they touched it up. So if they could touch up the other scenes in that way, I'd be totally happy. So uh, you get one good mark for touch-ups, Kai, so far. We are only 41 episodes in. Yeah, one for about two or three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, I'm glad you also noticed this power-up scene because it's. I thought it was very well done. Um. And there are so many points where they build Vegeta up to be a badass. It's cool to actually see him get those scenes in every now and then. Um, just he's been a fun character to follow so far, but we'll that's an entire discussion that I don't want to get into right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Get me off on a tangent. Uh, yeah, the I mean, I'm glad that this scene is given the respect that I think Vegeta deserves because he's about to get his ass handed to him, like I was saying. <laughs> yeah, Vegeta and Frieza, they begin their dance, and even with this big Saiyan exploit power-up, Frieza doesn't even seem to break a sweat in the initial exchange. I mean, it's just child's play again, and Vegeta's getting more and more enraged. And this is where we see the Dragon Ball classic of, I'm panicking, throw a bunch of key blasts at it, and hope it works, which... Last time I checked, it's never worked. This is kind of Vegeta's specialty. And by specialty, I mean, he throws a tantrum and throws a lot of key blasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So the panic key blast assault move, uh, which real quick, it's animated. Well, it looks very good looks... on screen. So I will give the animators credit on that. It looks fantastic, even though it is at this point kind of a meme move for me. Yeah, I mean, I love even Vegeta's like pose as he raises his hands up into the air and and you get this like black silhouette of Vegeta with the yellow key surrounding his body. Their selection Looks of contrast awesome. was was spot on. The things that were supposed to be standing out looked fantastic and they stood way out. I, it's unbelievable how how good this scene looks and how also unimportant it kind of is. <laughs> I guess the the only reason why this scene is important is because this is like the fall of the Prince of All Saiyans. And this is kind of showing it's honestly here to just show how outclassed he is, despite all of the power ups that he's had. Oh, up to this yeah. Point. And the 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 motion of Frieza as he's kind of swimming between all the key blasts that Vegeta's firing looks fantastic and freezes once again just not even breaking a sweat it's kind of these rapid fire explosions that are happening all around and freeze is doing these kind of like small deliberate like almost slow motions as he predicts every single blast that vegeta's throwing out it's it's really well done there's a great moment in here as Vegeta's blasting at Frieza and missing every time where Frieza deliberately moves right next to the rest of the Z fighters and just with he a smiles. sadistic, yeah, sadistic <laughs> grin on his face and Piccolo grabs the others and is like, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, I love Frieza as a villain. Well, Vegeta still having some villain in him is is just he's a 10 out of 10 mad right now and he's going to put everything into a just planet shattering final blast and blast looks great animated beautifully uh Frieza knocks it away with pretty much no effort 
Yeah. I mean, the, the rest of the crew here is, is like screaming at Vegeta, like, don't put that much energy into the attack. You're going to destroy the entire planet. And sure enough, as Frieza kicks the energy attack right back up towards Vegeta, going right by him into space, it explodes right outside of the planet. And the explosion is damn near the same size as the planet in the visual. It's awesome. Yeah, it looks great. The entire horizon is just just painted white as the flash of the explosion just blinds everything, washes everything out. And as we kind of come back in the view, we see that Vegeta's will is just broken. And he is just, I mean, he's got nothing left. Psychologically, he's checked out. And we get some narration from King Kai who comments on how this is the first time that our Saiyan prince has truly felt helpless. And we see Vegeta do something really unexpected. He starts to kind of tear up. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's tears in his eyes. Even the way that his posture is drawn is excellent as he's kind of slouched over uh, almost this like small posture of, of resignation of giving up. Like Vegeta knows that he is outmatched at this point because he gave everything in that key blast and this is the turning point where frieza is now ready to go on the offensive yeah and in this moment i can only imagine vegeta kind of looking back at his life and thinking you know i've spent every waking moment trying to break free of this tyrant's squeeze on on me my people and getting revenge for their death my father's death and just that chip on his shoulder that he was wearing his whole life. And, and at this moment he thought he was going to get revenge. He thought he was going to make good on all that. And then realizing that even his entire life's work wasn't enough to, to lay low the tyrant. I mean, you gave a great summary of it. I love this moment because in all the times that we see, there are so many times where Vegeta is receiving an ass whooping and more often than not, he's just angry. Like he, he won't accept that he's less powerful than the person that he's fighting. I think this might be the only time where we see Vegeta outclassed by another fighter where he is in tears. Because all that history with Frieza of being his slave and lackey, all of that is coming to a head here as free, as Vegeta tries to break free of those those shackles and he's just unable to do so. Yeah, it's it's probably the most, I would say, emotional moment of of Vegeta, I guess, being outclassed like this. We've seen Things like this with, um, I believe there was a uh, legendary Super Saiyan movie where he kind of gives up. Which one was it? Oh, probably the original Broly movie. I think it was the original Broly movie. Um, but that's the one that comes off the top of my head because I think I watched the DBZ abridged version that long ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this this is definitely an emotional moment. And Frieza is not giving Vegeta any time to work through these emotions as he launches his own attack and Vegeta doesn't even attempt a defense. He just sits there, takes it and he's knocked down hard into the water, just ugh, like a bone shattering blow that he gets really no, no reprieve from as Frieza pursues the broken saying down into the water, spreading it open almost like a biblical character and begins to just beat, and just mercilessly torture the helpless Vegeta. Oh yeah, this is definitely Frieza pulling his best Moses interpretation <laughs> uh, as he parts the Namekian Sea. I mean, this scene is is excellent. Uh, Vegeta's on the bottom of the ocean floor, and. Frieza grabs him by his troll doll hair and just lifts him up into the air and is just telling him how worthless he is. Uh, there's even the the brief moment 
that where there's a crab crawling on Vegeta's shoulder. I still shoulder. don't get that. It, it's such a strange thing, right? Where Frieza grabs it and just eats it in two bites. I feel like the only reason for this is to show further show how alien Frieza is because no human or even Saiyan would fucking just eat a crab like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I mean it's it's an intense scene. Also this is a scene where they the the music choice for it was correct. This is the one where they have kind of the the somber music with the single voice kind of um kind of choir singing and it lines up great with it and as as freeze is torturing vegeta he even turns and looks at our other heroes and almost dares them to step in dares them to try and save vegeta from his fate yeah i i mean we get as as frieza pulls vegeta out of the water wrapping his tail around vegeta's neck turning him into a saiyan punching bag frieza's just punching vegeta in the kidneys over and over and over and just pummeling him i mean there's even a moment where piccolo has to stop gohan from intervening because there's nothing they can do but watch vegeta get pummeled mercilessly yeah and all all they're really hoping for is that goku will eventually show up and speaking of goku his time in the rejuvenation chamber is up and we see him emerge from his chamber after he, of course, blasted open. They Saiyans don't open the doors. They blast him open. And I fucking love that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we see that his wounds are fully healed. His stamina looks fully recovered and his clothes are fully mended now, which was neat. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a scene where he puts on new clothes, but yeah, they're they're good now. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe King Kai like transported him some clothes with a very distant clothes beam. I don't. I didn't think about that. That's weird. I'll have to look back. Like I'm pretty sure his clothes were at least somewhat tattered from his fight with uh, uh, Ginyu. Yeah, they absolutely were. So he, maybe he had a fresh pair. But yeah, I I still love the the fact that any time a Saiyan is in a healing pod. They can't use the door. They're just like, up, oh, done. <laughs> uh, just, it just makes me laugh. Uh, their medical bills have to be just outrageous. <laughs> I also wanted to point out at this moment, too, this was one of my favorite music cues here with kind of the, we had some badass hero music with the entrance of Goku. Uh, again, kind of like a Japanese rock song. I don't know where the heck they pulled these from. But some of them sound really good. Yeah, I mean, the music so far, none of the music has been distracted. It's all been either appropriate or good for me. Like, it's all it's all worked for me. I haven't been upset with it. None of it's been distracting. Um, I mean, so I'm happy with the music choices, with the Goku kind of, you know, reveal or the coming back into the light music and scene. Music seemed to work for me. Um I don't like some of the touch-ups they did because you get like the, the ultimate panning shot of him getting ready to go and just the touch-ups look awful. I'm like, Oh, just, you should have just left it. What are you doing? There's, there's a lot of them. There's one scene in particular that I want to talk about, but yeah, I, <laughs> I had to just like, I had to just turn my brain off due to there. There's so many shots that they touched up that just don't look good. Yeah. The, the problem too, is that they're touching up kind of, some of the most iconic shots too, where it's just like, that didn't need anything. You didn't need to touch anything. It looked great before. Don't touch it. We're going to talk about the most iconic shot that they touched up. Oh no. And, oh, <laughs> oh no. Man. All right. Well, I think that brings us into episode 42 defeat Frieza, son, Goku, the proud Vegeta's tears. And we see Vegeta's torture just continuing as our heroes are forced to helplessly look on. And just as Vegeta's life is pretty much about to be taken, Goku finally arrives on scene. And I just, it brought me back to the very first time I saw this scene where I kind of get like the chills down the body where it's just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> I, I honestly, 
I've seen this a million times. I honestly got teary eyed when I saw Goku come in on the scene. I was like, this is my childhood right here, man. Goku coming in to save the day. This is, oh, I love this so much. Yeah. And I mean, unfortunately, this is also another scene where the touch ups kind of take away from this iconic moment for me. So I do have to point that out that they don't look great. But they also decided to insert something here where they have clips from the Bardock movie and Frieza kind of thinking back. It's really weird, and I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember, actually, that part, if they had any of that in the original dub or not. Um, I mean, they definitely they definitely talk about that scene. Uh, because Frieza recognizes, I mean, even the overlay of like Bardock's face on Goku's face, Frieza definitely recognizes Goku as a relative of Bardock. And I mean, I'm I'm kind of okay with them having that scene here. I feel like the scene that they had of that in the beginning of Kai was weirdly placed, but this this part doesn't bother me having that. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's... It's just weird to me just because there's I feel like whenever they get a chance to bring up like the Bardock stuff, they're doing it because I don't think this is the last time it happens either. It just it feels weird to me. I eh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I don't know if I like how they handled it. I mean, it's really funny because in the manga we're past it by a few months at this point, but. There's a lot of Bardock stuff and everybody is like, oh, I love Bardock. And it feels like they're really pandering to the bardock fan base for whatever mm. reason uh so maybe that's kind of what they're doing here in kai as well i don't know i mean then again for me i don't really like the bardock story because i like goku being kind of a nobody who became a hero and then when you make his dad also like a very heroic figure it really makes it feel like it's in the bloodline sort of thing and i don't know i just like goku kind of being a mountain boy who grew up and forged his own destiny and and Frieza, we don't need the irony of Frieza being defeated by Bardock's son. It's ironic that Frieza was defeated by a Saiyan who grew up on Earth, a planet full of weaklings, weaklings. And uh, it was like a kid who can't count who grew up in the mountains. Yeah, I'm I get your point. And I uh, it's, it's too much. It's too you're piling too much onto this plate. The funny part is the manga does it even more dirty in the more recent arcs where they, well, there's some Bardock shenanigans that completely take away from Goku's story as like a low-class warrior who rises to the top. Anybody who's read the Granola arc knows what I'm talking about, but I am I agree with you. I want Goku's story to be about somebody who has really worked their way to the top of you know, to be one of the best fighters in the universe and sometimes the bardock stuff and the saiyan stuff takes away from that a little bit yeah it's i'm not saying it it ruins it for me but it's just i it does detract from it for me i like he i like him being a nobody and it's kind of cool because it makes him like you can see yourself in goku easier when you're just like oh well look at him he was a nobody and that inspires me right Versus, well, he's not a nobody. He's the son of, of, okay, all right. Well, now this character just became like less endearing. Yeah. I mean, the good thing is at the very least, Bardock is supposed to be like a low class warrior. So you still kind of have that going for you with Goku and everything. Um, so Goku was supposed to be like a low class Saiyan and still managed to rise to the top. And that's I mean, that's where Vegeta's whole frustration is. <laughs> also, I don't care about Bardock because I only care about Grandpa Gohan and like Master Roshi. So get that Bardock out of here. Yeah, that's totally fair. I mean, Bardock, honestly, ha outside of the fact that he birthed Goku, has re no real connection to him. Well, all right. Now that I've gotten that out of my system and pissed off at least a portion <laughs> of anybody listening, um, <laughs> Frieza decides to go on the attack after a little monologue of his distaste in Saiyans. And uh, everyone's shocked. Goku actually outmaneuvers Frieza's attack and lands a blow of his own. So we're kind of getting a change of uh, of pace here. We're getting another measuring stick moment, aren't we? Yeah, 100%. I mean, 
yeah, Goku delivers a solid kick to Frieza's face, and then Frieza, kind of surprised, is just like, okay, I'm going to shoot you with my death beam. And Goku knocks the first one away. Frieza decides to shoot a barrage of death beams, and Goku literally single-handedly blocks all of them. One of the things that I really like about this scene too, and I think they point this out in the original, but not in Kai, is that Goku is not only blocking all of Frieza's attacks, Goku is also preventing those beams from hitting any of his friends as he deflects them. Which You're hundred percent is... correct. In the original dub, they point that out and Kai, they don't. Yeah. I was bummed that they don't point it out. I mean, you do see one blast like zip past Piccolo's head, but I love that detail. Right. It's the, it's, it's showing his mastery, just how, how disciplined he is. It's he's paying attention. He's not just, you know, he's not out there showboating. He's not being flamboyant. It's he's concentrated. He's focused. He's aware of his surroundings. It's everything's a little higher level than it appears at the surface. Yeah. It's not just, oh, I'm, you know, I'm strong enough to defend myself. It's I'm a big enough badass to block these and deflect them the way that I want them to go. <laughs> it's fantastic. And after seeing this, I believe um, uh, Vegeta gives a speech of some sort. Do you remember what it was? He's a super saiyan. <laughs> yes, we get another super saiyan rant. Like I said, in Kai, <laughs> it's comical. I don't know. It was not meant for all this to happen in, you know, like 10 episodes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I like the story of the Super Saiyan. I like that they continue to tie it in. It, maybe it's just Dragon Ball Z a bridge, or maybe it's just how condensed Kai is. It feels comical. It's not supposed to be, but it feels <laughs> silly. <laughs> I mean, especially after seeing a bridge, it, you're thinking about it, right? It's in your head, so now you're looking for it. Yeah, that's that's probably at least part of what it is. But, <laughs> I mean, this turns into... Honestly, one of my favorite parts in all of Z, where Frieza is done with Vegeta's shit, and he death beams him straight through the chest, taking him down low to the ground. Yeah, and Vegeta is now gasping for air as he looks at Goku and kind of gives his, his farewell speech, I guess, or his farewell talk. And he tells Goku that he, he needs to harden his heart if he's going to embrace the Super Saiyan legend. And Goku actually declines. He's, he says that, I'm not about that. I'm not sure if this legend is for me, but I have to do things the way that I do them. And Vegeta goes through his, his Saiyan homeworld being destroyed by Frieza. And I mean, we learned that two minutes into the series, so it doesn't really hit very hard. Um <laughs> We see his eyes overflowing with tears and with his dying breath, he asks Goku to be the one to beat Frieza, that Frieza be defeated by the hands of a Saiyan. I love this so much. I Music? You know what? I didn't have a music note here. Um... Music took a somber note. It sounded good to me. It fit the scene. Wasn't over the top. Um, everything hummed along. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, I I did, though, I went back to watch the original dub of this scene because there's a lot of controversy in the original dub because Vegeta has a line, something to the effect of when he's trying to convince Goku to beat Frieza, he says, Frieza made me who I am, kind of implying that Vegeta wouldn't have been such an evil person, if not for Frieza controlling him. Oh, no, uh, the situation was reversed. This conversation would have never happened. <laughs> You'd be, dead. be dying and I'd be <laughs> laughing. <laughs> um, I honestly, I like that line. And this is going to be a hot take. Uh, I, I like Vegeta saying that to Goku because it's it's Vegeta being vulnerable, but I also don't take Vegeta as being 100% genuine or honest. It, I think that it could either be taken as Vegeta being like delusional, like blaming Frieza for that, even though that's 
that's not the case, even though Vegeta would have been evil regardless. Or I think it's Vegeta in the moment of his death, just saying that to try to manipulate Goku in that moment. Like, I think people take it too literally as like just Vegeta saying it genuinely. And I don't think that that's the case. So I'm a little bit bummed that we don't get that line in in Kai because I actually really liked it. I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's Vegeta wearing at least every, or he's putting everything out there, right? Whether he's trying to get Goku to do what he wants, or if he's trying to get a story across, I, it's hard to say because he's, you know, he's dealing with his mortality at this point, who knows what could be running through his head. And I don't mind that line. It's interesting though, because I don't think, I don't think that's ever really explored later in Dragon Ball, is it? Vegeta's, I guess, the influence that Frieza had on his personality. I don't think that's ever really explored later in the series. Not by much. I mean, we get a little bit of, like in the Boo saga, when we get Vegeta going back to his roots of being evil but even then he he expresses that it's it's him going back to his saiyan heritage and doesn't say anything about frieza and then in the manga after after the end of the super anime there's a little bit with vegeta and talking to beerus about frieza destroying his planet but it's it's very few and far between that it's really even touched on at all. I don't know. It's it's an interesting it's an interesting note because you can look at it through multiple lenses and get a different result. It could be rather than being um the the leader of the Saiyan people, he had to sit aside and be a puppet and that influenced who he was. It made him kind of make spineless decisions and do whatever it took to survive. He would have been evil either way, but he may have had more bravado and less backstabbing if Frieza had never been involved. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. I There is no world, no Dragon Ball world in my mind where Vegeta was not influenced in some way, shape, or form by the upbringing that he had at Frieza's hands. Well, I'm pretty sure, too, that it's mentioned that even before Frieza came along, the Saiyans were pretty savage and and pretty ruthless, and Frieza just tapped into that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, I mean, I, I love this in Vegeta being vulnerable more than anything. I love Vegeta having to face his trauma, having to face the the person who he's hated his entire life, uh, and I mean, Vegeta, Vegeta wants nothing more than to see Frieza dead. And he's hoping that that's what Goku is going to give him. Yeah, that's, that's kind of his final wish. And with his final wish asked for, we get King Kai kind of putting a, he kind of puts an elegant framing on the situation, which I like. He kind of narrates all the struggles that Vegeta had gone through throughout his life. And then... Goku decides to give Vegeta his own uh, burial. And that's more or less where the episode ends. It's Vegeta's dead. He's buried. And now Goku has his eyes set on the, well, the biggest fish in the pond. Yeah, I think for the most part, I, I mean, I love the tail end of that, that episode, but I think that takes us into the next one. Yes, which is episode 43, Son Goku vs. Frieza. The curtain opens on the super decisive battle. And Goku and Frieza give each other the stare down. Piccolo grabs the runs and takes off. And what we get, what I consider to be the first sequence of one of the greatest and longest battles in all of Dragon Ball. <laughs> this is where Goku kind of delicately lifts up on his toes and then drives his feet deep into the earth, pushing off with great speed as he throws his first punch at Frieza, which is blocked. This is great. I also love that the the cue that Piccolo gets to leave is just the 
quickest of eye flicks from Goku, like, hey, get out of here. And Piccolo picks up on it like, oh, we're in the way here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this is this is gonna be uh off the hook. <laughs> yeah. This is this is such a cool exchange uh, with Goku dodging multiple tail attacks from Frieza. Uh, there's a key blast exchange here where Frieza blasts at Goku and then Goku to rapidly get out of the way, blasts the ground to launch himself into the air. It's just a super cool exchange. I mean, it's it's super fun. And that key blast he dodged, the animation makes it look like it's a freaking nuclear explosion. It's a mushroom cloud. They are really kicking the stakes up here. Yeah, and the mushroom cloud creating all that smoke sets up an environment where Frieza can't see Goku. And so he starts shooting eye beams blindly into the smoke. And Goku realizes, oh, oh, this guy can't sense energy. And so he kind of logs that for a later exchange. Yeah, it's it's funny because this is like a very serious, like very serious fight, but they still find a way to kind of insert humor into it where Goku goes to deflect one of Frieza's blasts and it's kind of an intense blast, but he does. And then you see him kind of blowing on his hands because they're too hot. They, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I mean, this is, this feels very Goku. He's got a little bit of like slapstick energy, even when he's in a very serious situation. Uh, there's also like, as they finish one of their exchanges, throwing key blasts around, there's a moment where Goku almost just like teleports behind Frieza where they're back to back. And as the smoke clears, you see them both just standing on this tiny little piece of land that's like 60 feet up in the air. It's an awesome shot. And also getting to see the height difference of them back to back as you see the diminutive but vastly powerful Frieza next to the uh, average height Goku. He looks very tall against Frieza. Yeah, it's I do like how they kind of take like the David versus Goliath kind of image you normally think of when the hero is fighting the villain and they flip it on its head. How often do you see a very, very powerful opponent who's smaller than the protagonist? It's it's really I don't know. It's really fun. Yeah, I mean, I think Toriyama is maybe one of the maybe not the first person to ever do that, but is one of the people in anime who kind of popularized the idea that not everything that appears one way is actually that way. Uh, he kind of puts like small, a small package with a big power or, you know, things that are simple or sometimes better or more complicated <laughs> it keeps it fun it keeps you guessing and it, i don't know it's just fun but we we get a couple more exchanges and goku seems to be kind of the better i would say fighter but frieza's raw strength is just too massive and we get a point where goku is knocked deep under the water and he actually does something which you don't see terribly often he takes a minute to think I don't see Goku taking a minute to think very often. Yeah. And this is where he kind of puts that the knowledge of Frieza not being able to sense energy into play here as he uses a Kamehameha, which is in a bit of a weird format because it creates two balls in front of him. He leaves those energy balls there and swims to another spot and then one at a time launches these balls up into the air through the water up at Frieza in the air. Frieza looks thinking that it's Goku coming out, almost gets hit by the first energy ball. And then Goku launches the second attacking Frieza with it. Uh, Frieza has to just barely dodge that one. And then Goku comes soaring out of the air with a double foot kick to Frieza's face. This is such a good exchange oh i know it's i mean it's so clever it's goku once again showing that he's an experienced fighter he's he's i mean all the stuff that he's done in all the world martial arts tournaments this lines right up with because we've seen him launch uh kamehameha wave with his freaking feet before to fly around with it so summoning two waves and kind of controlling them remotely it's another it's another expansion of his Kamehameha wave use. It's him showing his expertise with that technique. And 
it's cool, it's fun, and it's also him reading his opponent and game planning around it. It's I love it when they actually show an experienced fighter making experienced decisions. Yeah, yeah, I I very much agree. This is this is maybe peak Goku in my mind. Uh and we kind of move the fight forward as Frieza now oh, starts the to weight of that double that double kick by the way the weight of the impact on Frieza and then Frieza impacting the ground oh you could feel it yeah they do a great job with that throughout this entire fight honestly uh Frieza starts to pull out some of his additional skill sets here as he uses his mind to attack Goku with rocks uh which turns into a bit of a light show as Goku kind of blasts all of the rocks into dust. Yeah, but Frieza's smart and realizes that his problem is that the rocks weren't big enough. And so Frieza grabs what I can only describe as a small mountain and just hurls it at (laughs) Goku, who decides that he's going to catch it and is smashed between that mountain and another mountain. But there's kind of a pause and then a little flash of light, and then Goku comes just flying out from underneath it all, and turns out he's perfectly fine. These are such cool visuals, as there's almost like a slice of key energy through the mountain, and then the mountain kind of like slides to one side as Goku comes flying through it. Just such, I mean, they're so fun and so creative. This fight has really great set pieces in it. It does, and it, it's, I mean, once this fight starts going, in this episode it just keeps rolling because goku hops out of well his mountain home and is greeted by a frieza who catches him off guard and uses a technique that i this is like one of the first times i've seen anything like this where it basically fully encapsulates goku and causes him to just be completely defenseless i don't really know how it works but yeah, Goku is now uh, ensnared. I, I'll i be honest, the original dub, and maybe this isn't in the Japanese, but the original dub at least gives some more details about the technique because I'm fairly certain that Frieza even tells Goku, if this ball touches anything other than my body, it will detonate in a massive key explosion. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, they do explain that in the original. They don't explain anything in Kai. Like, I didn't remember how the technique worked, but yeah, they did explain that originally. Yeah, which I thought was a super cool detail about this technique. But yeah, they, they Kai is cutting out a few things that I'm like, mm, I liked that part. <laughs> <laughs> like, explaining how this technique works. Yeah, don't cut that part. Yeah, but... This technique is still presented in a really cool way as Frieza uses Goku like a Saiyan soccer ball and just (laughs) bounces him around in the air, uh, eventually saying, I'm sick of this game, and then blasting him with another key blast, sending him rocketing towards the landscape where, if we know how the technique works, he's going to detonate. Yeah, um, and there is a detonation. The entire horizon is just filled with this gigantic blast, but, I mean, Goku emerges in what looks like pretty decent shape. It seems like he's relatively unscathed. And we're starting to get the idea that uh, I think these two combatants are are just having fun right now. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to point out, too, I'm getting nitpicky about the details, but the... <laughs> The old dub says that Goku outran the blast. Like he was so fast that it hit, exploded, and then he outran it. This one, they say that Goku freed himself from the hold at the last second. I like the old detail better. I'm not going to lie. The old detail's funnier, and I like that. <laughs> it's it's almost more ridiculous, but also more badass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like He was just too fast. Yeah, there was an explosion. He just ran from it. <laughs> yeah i wish mm, yeah i th- I think i do like the old one a little bit better i think the old one's funnier <laughs> i i like both funny and badass so i i like that detail but, <laughs> but i'm getting nitpicky here i so. don't mind it. that's what we're here to do and speaking of nitpicking um we're done with this episode so we're going to episode 44 let's do which it. is A physical war that exceeds all limits. Goku and Frieza and Ginyu again? Um, I'm going to let you know right now, we're going to skip the Ginyu stuff because it is irrelevant. Absolutely worthless. Should have been cut out. 
<laughs> but uh, I'll, here, I tell you what, I'll summarize it all. Bulma and Captain Ginyu swap bodies. They'll swap back later. It doesn't matter. There, I read my bullet point I made. Done. <laughs> so, back to Goku and Frieza. <laughs> yes, they continue to face off. And Frieza's, well, Frieza's arrogance has afforded Goku whatever home field advantage he wants. Frieza is a generous tyrant and allows Goku to pick whether he would like to fight in the sky or down in the earth. And Goku picks the earth because yeah. that's where I think he's done the majority of his fighting. So good call. <laughs> yeah. Smart, smart. It does. Honestly, it almost feels like Frieza's very adept at fighting in the air, maybe better, more experienced with flight. I don't know. It just seems interesting. But Frieza also adds, I'll even give you one more. I will fight you without the use of my hands moving forward. Fine. Well, I'll fight you without using my shirt. <laughs> no, uh, y y wait, you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I have to point this out because whenever a character takes their shirt off, it means that they're getting serious. And Goku takes his shirt off right here. Goku is going serious. It's real fight time, baby. Mm. And we kind of move forward. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a number of little exchanges here where Freeze is fighting with his feet, but using his tail to great effect. As he, at one point, wraps the tail around Goku's head, Goku just barely holding it off, and Goku, screaming out, seemingly in pain and anger, bites down onto Frieza's tail to free himself. <laughs> I love it. He's a mountain boy at heart and he's going to bite and scratch and do whatever it takes to win. And I mean, it's such a Goku moment and it's Frieza's kind of taken off guard. Frieza has, was not expecting this mountain man move and Goku goes in and lands a couple punches and Frieza just pissed off, decides to just land a punch of his own. Yeah. I mean, Goku's pretty pleased actually, because he made Frieza use his hands uh but i mean this this isn't uh, this is kind of a um maybe a mental victory for goku but he's still kind of getting his ass whooped if i'm being perfectly honest <laughs> he is but after this he decides to like during a brief pause tell frieza that he's getting too cocky and goku of all people should not be telling people that I, that's something that we talked about in Super, right? Where Goku is, you know, arguably one of the most cocky people around. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, to capitalize on the arrogance, the, Frieza decides to offer Goku a position in his galactic empire. And I don't know why, but I love that Frieza had the arrogance of being like, would you like to be my minion? You, you seem worth it. This is fantastic. I love this, too. Like, the fact that Frieza's like, I really need someone to replace Ginyu. I've kind of murdered all of my minions up to this point, so would you like to come fight for me? <laughs> like, it's just... It's Frieza still not even really taking Goku that seriously. It's just like, eh, you're not bad, actually. Uh, you could work for me. <laughs> I just want Frieza to end this by saying, really, I just need someone to fly the ship. I don't have anybody to fly the ship. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, this is where Frieza decides that um, he's going to start taking the fight somewhat seriously. And I think mentions that he's going to power up to half of his power now. That's at least the claim that he gives to Goku as this lightning kind of strikes Frieza and he gets a he he powers himself up. Uh, this turns into a very one sided exchange as Frieza dashes in, trips Goku up, wraps his tail around Goku's neck one more time, choking him and then elbows goku right in the gut and he, there's such a good shot of frieza kind of slinking away from goku on all fours after he delivers this attack again they really push that kind of alien nature of frieza in this fight that i really love well it's also the arrogance of frieza started walking away from goku before he had even let go of him with his tail and so you see Goku being dropped to the ground as Frieza's not even like looking at him as he lets go. He knows that he landed a good blow and he knows that Goku's not a threat. It's it's this 
like you said, it's alien, but it's also arrogant too. It says so much in one little scene. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. It, it, it's, it's very much, I mean, Dragon Ball has a lot of moments where they're kind of telling you what's going on. A lot of the interactions or a lot of the fight scenes here with Goku and Frieza are very show instead of tell, which I like a lot too. It's very well done. And it's at this point that Goku realizes that he's up against the wall and he's going to try just a desperate attack, but he's easily just beaten back down. And yeah, this is where we learn that the situation is even worse than what it looks like to the viewer as King Kai has been watching the whole time. And he's discussing the situation with Tien, Yamcha, and Chaozu back on his planet. And Goku's been tapping into the Kaioken this entire time. They don't explain it as well as they did in the original. I agree. They just show you in the clips what he's doing, but they don't really... King Kai doesn't tell you what's going on in Kai very well. But what Goku has been doing, according to the original, is that he's been selectively tapping into the Kaioken during pinnacle moments kind of showing this high level of mastery over the technique that I feel like was kind of just glossed over or even left out right here. Uh, again, I'm getting nitpicky, but there are so many details like this in the Kai dub that they they leave out, which it, it really, it, it doesn't give as much, it doesn't show like kind of what you said. It doesn't show the level of mastery in terms of like techniques or martial arts that one might expect from Goku, somebody that we've followed through his martial arts journey for decades at this point. Uh, I I really like when they go into that level of detail about the fights and they just don't do it in Kai. Yeah. And this, this time though, because they're already talking about it, they're already there. They could have just said it. Um, this wasn't something that I feel like was cut. This was something that I feel like was either forgotten or sloppily written I don't really think there's an excuse here because they literally have King Kai explaining the situation and he just doesn't. Right. Yeah, exactly. Just says like, okay, yeah, Goku's using it, but doesn't express how he's using it. Um, I think honestly, though, as we kind of find out that revelation that uh, Goku's in some deep shit, I think that takes us to the next episode. Yeah, which is episode 45. It's a 20-fold Kaioken, a Kamehameha with everything on the line. And the fight rages on, except it's a, a beatdown. Goku seems like he's up against the ropes. Bad as Frieza just repeatedly thrashes Goku in a brutal pummeling. I mean, it's just, it's nasty. Yeah, there's one point where Frieza slashes his hand across with an energy attack that cuts a deep gash. It looks like it goes across the entire surface of planet Namek. It's super cool. It just narrowly misses Goku. And at one point as Frieza is just physically beating the snot out of our Saiyan hero, Goku exhausted and battered just falls forward onto Frieza's shoulder and Frieza takes that moment to wrap his tail around Goku's neck one more time, tossing him into the water. And this exchange here might be one of my favorites because with Goku in the water, unable to breathe, he tries to come back up and is met continuously with key blast after key blast after key blast as Frieza just keeps him beneath the surface of the water. And then finally, when Goku is able to resurface Frieza plants a foot on top of his head and pushes him back down into the water, beginning to drown the Saiyan. Yeah. And Goku's gasping for breath and he's, you know, reaching up and he, he even mentions just before that that his lungs are burning, that he needs air. And we see our hero begin to kind of lose energy and his eyes close as we watch him drift out of consciousness. And he begins having visions of his friends and family all suffering and even dying by the hands of Frieza. And this kind of realization of everything that's riding on the line snaps Goku out of it and he decides to go for the ace in a hole. He decides to kick up the Kaioken to a times 20 
and Shemmel's Kaioken roar right here where he screams out, you do not mess with my friends. The delivery is perfect. It's so good because we get to see those visions of like Krillin and Chi Chi and Gohan. And, you know, we kind of hear them screaming out as if they were being killed. Uh, if, if Goku loses this fight and yeah, Sean Shemmel, a plus work here as Goku kind of frees himself from the grasp of Frieza and then launching into his Kaioken times 20, we get just one punch, two punches, and then a Kamehameha at that times 20 Kaioken. And it is, oh, it is cathartic to see Goku finally get one up on Frieza in this moment. And it's such a fast scene too. The sequence is very quick. And all the blows are they're heavy. You feel them. The animation quality is very good. Um, the Kamehameha wave, while it's not the most over the top, because it's a quick, impactful Kamehameha wave, you can almost feel the desperation in the technique. And it, the the sky is just awash with its explosion until the dust settles and Frieza is irritated. Yeah, I mean, Frieza basically blocked this with one hand and all Goku really did was char his hand. And so this now enrages Frieza and we kind of get the impression that Goku is just out of ideas, out of steam. And Frieza flies in with a vicious headbutt to Goku's face, uh, kicks him in the jaw, which is... Oh, it's brutally animated uh, and then kicks him into a rock and into the water once more. And as Goku kind of crawls his way halfway out of the water, Frieza grabs Goku and the Saiyan spits onto Frieza's face, not even really meaning to just coughing up water. That, that this... initial headbutt, like I, I felt that in my core, the, the animation on that was just fantastic the feel the weight of that impact as goku is just defenselessly just, oh, oh man yeah. that that was well done big props to the animators in that one 100 percent uh i mean frieza is just pissed off at this point and so frieza hits goku away with his tail once more and Goku is almost out of it at this point. He he's kind of like in his own head and we kind of transition over to what can only be described as the ghost of Vegeta speaking to Goku. Yeah, when when Goku and we don't hear Goku mention this often, he he mentions that he doesn't even stand a chance against this guy and begins to start giving up. And this is where the ghost Vegeta pep talk comes in and I mean, it's it's interesting because once again, um, because of the compact formatting of Kai, it feels like we had just had a talk with Vegeta like last episode. I think it was. And so getting another pep talk like this quick was a little bit jarring to me, but it's Vegeta kind of going through the the like Goku's destiny and the weight of all the same people that rides on his shoulders and kind of reinvigorating Goku from a sane perspective, right? Because that's the lens that Vegeta cares about. And it kind of works. I think it kind of peps Goku back up and gets him ready to fight again. Yeah. And I mean, I like this moment. I was actually, because I was curious, I was scrolling through my notes. There, there are two episodes in between the F Vegeta's death scene and then his pep talk in Got Goku's it. head. Um, but I, I get what you mean, though. It it feels quick, especially compared to the original, where we have probably dozens of more episodes of this fight. Uh, but yeah, it's I mean, I, I like this. I I like that they are trying to tie Goku into his Saiyan heritage, especially because that's kind of the big theme here, right? Is that we have this low class Saiyan fighting against this base emperor who murdered all of the Saiyans because he was afraid of them 
And so we we kind of want to see the Saiyan be victorious over this tyrant. Uh, and Vegeta is just kind of like hammering that home of like, he's afraid of the Saiyans. He murdered all of the Saiyans. You need to step up as the last of the Saiyans and kill Frieza. It, embrace your destiny, right? Like that's kind of the the mantra here is you're, you've got Saiyan blood. You've got the Saiyan heritage. Um, you also have the Saiyan legend on your side. Just embrace it. There's even a, a line from Vegeta here. I mean, the the words here from Vegeta, or the dialogue is is honestly quite flattering towards Goku, which is interesting. He even says, you personify our race, which is kind of funny to hear him say that because he's been talking shit down to Goku <laughs> for a long time. Uh, I mean, it's you might as well. He's the only pure-blooded saying that we're aware of right now that's still alive so he has to personify the race because there's no other options yeah yeah i mean uh, that's kind of the thing here right is vegeta is vegeta has kind of changed his tune because goku's the only one who can who can defeat frieza goku's the only one who can avenge the saiyan race so and i, I mean i get it Vegeta was just in that fight and he probably knows full well just how incredible Goku is in this moment. Yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, I don't want to talk the, the Vegeta point to death. I think that pretty much ends that episode and then takes us into the next yeah, one. Yeah, episode 46. This is the last trump card. Goku's extra large Genki Dama, whatever that is. <laughs> That's our spirit bomb, baby. Oh, Genki Damas, right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, uh, Goku decides to rejoin the fight uh, with renewed vigor. Even though Frieza is caught off guard a little bit by this, the battle's still quite stacked against our hero. And Frieza begins just unleashing torture rays. And, I mean, it's things aren't any better for Goku at this point, really. Yeah, I mean... Goku, again, Goku's out of ideas, except for one. And he thinks the only thing that I have that could maybe beat this guy is the spirit bomb. And so he stands up, he throws his arms in the air, and he starts charging the spirit bomb in the middle of this fight. <laughs> yeah, literally feet from Frieza. And not only is he charging a spirit bomb from planet Namek, which is just absolutely ravaged at this point. He's pulling it from the surrounding planets, possibly the entire universe at this point, as much energy as he can get his hands on because he's going to need it to take down this enormous opponent. I was shocked by how fast they move through the spirit bomb stuff. Maybe it's just because I remember it being multiple, multiple episodes, but they, I mean, Goku starts charging it, and then the very next scene is Krillin being like, holy shit, look at that giant spirit bomb. <laughs> it does happen really quickly, and I do remember this being a lot longer originally. It Just Goku getting whooped around. A lot of back-and-forth dialogue as Goku tries to buy time, and Frieza likes to talk about Frieza, but I don't necessarily mind the pace of this because... I don't think we should spend too much time on the spear bomb. It's not a new technique, right? We've seen it before and it is kind of the, the ace in the whole technique, at least at this point. I agree with you. I, I don't think that they did a bad thing by speeding through Goku, just charging the attack. Uh, but it does result in Frieza getting angry that Goku's just standing there and then beating the snot out of him. And Goku's so busy charging the spirit bomb that he's both unable and unwilling to defend himself. Yeah, he gets knocked down a few times and he just stands back up, keeps his arms raised. Um, Frieza's punching him in the face and gut and Goku's just kind of taking it as he steps back. It's, I mean, it's a beating. And Piccolo decides that, uh, well... Guess what? I'm going to go ahead and step in and ask Gohan and Krillin to give them whatever energy they have left. Yeah. With that in mind, as the other three Z fighters 
collect their energy together in our Namekian hero, Piccolo dives in just as Freeze is about ready to give Goku a death beam directly in his face. There's a really cool scene with Goku kind of like leaping out of the water to throw a punch at Frieza just to try to defend himself once more. Frieza catches the punch and then sticks a glowing pink finger right in his face. It's really good. It's really diabolical as Frieza doesn't want to kill Goku. Frieza wants to uh, embarrass, emasculate, uh, torture, just make Goku's death as painful as possible to make sure that Goku knows that he stood no chance. Yeah, absolutely. I I love that element of Frieza. And this kind of turns into Goku tries to punch Frieza. Frieza's getting ready to blast Goku. And then Piccolo comes diving in with his hero kick and smacks Frieza down to the curb. I do like how how they animated Piccolo showing up because they show him kind of doing the 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 speed transitions as he's moving through the air to try and get there as expeditiously as possible. So they do a good job of communicating that Piccolo's trying to make it there in time because Goku's about to get dead. And when he arrives, the impact of that that strike was fantastic. And we get this brief moment where Piccolo's like, "All right, I need you to charge that thing ASAP because I'm not buying much time against that monster. I mean, Piccolo's expressing how dire the situation is in many moments saying, just throw the damn ball, Goku. (laughs) But Piccolo still, because Goku is unwilling to throw the spirit bomb, Piccolo steps up and goes to fight Frieza. And this is such a one-sided beatdown. There's one moment where Frieza teleports behind Piccolo, grabs onto his shoulder with such force that it looks like Piccolo's shoulder is going to pop. It's so vicious, and I love it. Yeah, that that was honestly a moment where I, I was like, did, did they rip Piccolo's arm off again? I don't remember this. <laughs> it was brutal. Yeah, it's savage. And, you know, it gets to a point where Piccolo just has absolutely nothing left to give. And Frieza is about ready to now murder Piccolo. Uh, And in... Oh, actually, I might be jumping ahead. You might be, because our last scene is Piccolo basically defenseless, almost paralyzed. All he can really do is lift his head off the ground. And... Frieza decides that he's done with this Namekian and lifts a finger to begin this deed. And that's where the episode ends, bringing us into episode 47. Awaken, legendary warrior, Son Goku, the Super Saiyan. And with Piccolo's life hanging in the balance, uh, who would save Piccolo other than his good friend Gohan and Krillin, who decide to, I, I guess shoot what little key they have left in a little blast. I mean, the, this key blast is going to do absolutely nothing to Frieza, right? They they gave most of their energy to Piccolo, but it does distract Frieza enough to not murder Piccolo and even enrages him so much so that he begins to float up into the air and is like, I'm done with all you motherfuckers. And he starts to charge his death ball in one finger, and he's just going to destroy the entire planet at this point. Yeah, and with... I mean, Frieza's rage is boiling over. He's done with all the annoyances. He's going to blow up this damn planet. And with all of this on full display, Goku realizes that, oh, the spirit bomb is done, and launches it at the now-distracted Frieza, who realizes a little too late that... This ball of death is coming towards him now. It's such a good visual, too, because you have the little black and pink ball, like the little pink electricity on Frieza's finger of his death ball technique. And it's it's kind of hanging out above him as the spirit bomb descends downward. It just gets absorbed by the mass of the spirit bomb. And Frieza extends his hands out, eyes wide in as this giant energy ball descends upon him. 
It's so good. Just Frieza struggling and screaming against the the energy balls. It just, I mean, the weight of it pressing down on Frieza as he fights back with everything he has. And our heroes are, they're diving for the dirt. They're diving for cover as this thing is coming down and Frieza can't stop it. And when it does, you get this just enormous blast that just whitens the whole landscape. And all of our heroes are actually scattered from it. They're shot off into the distance from the weight of this explosion. And after a brief pause, there's kind of a quiet. And there's starting to become the feeling that maybe the villain has finally been defeated. Yeah, we kind of see the destroyed landscape and the rolling water of planet Namek. And we eventually see Gohan and Krillin emerge from the, the destruction. They they check in with each other and they're like, where's Goku? Where's Piccolo? Are they, did they get, are they dead? Did they get taken out by the blast too? And we eventually see Piccolo claw his way out of the water. And it's such a good shot because you just get Piccolo's hand and then Piccolo's torso as he pulls himself up. But one hand is behind him in the water as he's breathing heavily and there's a brief pause. And then with the last bit of his strength, he pulls our Saiyan hero Goku out of the water onto land. It's so... It's so perfect that it's Piccolo who saved Goku from the water, that it's Piccolo pulling Goku ashore, just considering their history and how much they, they hated each other at one point and how they were bitter rivals. And now it's literally one of the main villains of Dragon Ball, the biggest villain of Dragon Ball, saving Goku's life. I, Man. It's picture perfect. That's a great point. Uh, and that's, I mean, it, it even ties into, like, this is this is the trend going forward, right? Goku has converted, I think, the first person being Tien as a bad guy to being a good guy. Now Piccolo has pretty much completed his transition to being a good guy and goku's working on vegeta slowly here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's it's kind of um a, a happy moment here is everybody kind of gets back together and there's a there's a small pause for for celebration and recovery as there's even some laughter happening as krilling cracks a joke about his reward for all this should be getting a girlfriend. And then, you know, they realize that, oh my gosh, we forgot about Balma, who's even scarier than than Frieza when she's mad. And, you know, they're, they're having fun and they're laughing. And it's it's really a good time right now. Yeah, I, I kind of love the little, like, pseudo foreshadowing of Krillin and Android 18 and his girlfriend comment. And then I also really like the the moment where krillin is like oh my gosh we forgot about balma it's kind of like a a fake it's a it's a scare fake out basically because krillin's face is just like oh my god and you're like uh, what did you see frieza and he's like no i forgot about balma uh <laughs> but that transitions into a real scare as krillin's looking off in the distance jaw hanging open eyes wide stuttering and he can't even express himself in words as to what he sees. Yeah, we get the reveal, and it is the battered, pissed-off form of Frieza, who I believe is missing a chunk of his tail at this point. And one of his eyes is mostly shut, and it's it's a dark scary moment because there's no bravado this time there's no frieza giving those over-the-top speeches or yelling or screaming it's just action frieza lifts one of his fingers and fires a little death ball of energy that well it's heading right towards goku who is knocked out of the way by piccolo and once again, Piccolo lays his life down for, for one of his friends as Gohan watches in absolute horror as one of his close friends or even father, one of his father figures die right before him. 
and he takes a moment to just scream in agony. This is a great moment. I, I mean, you, you just got done pointing out what a, what a great transition this is for Piccolo as he kind of saves Goku from the water. Now he saves Goku's life again from Frieza. And I mean, he's already sacrificed his life to save Gohan once he doesn't, he doesn't die here outright immediately, but did put his life on the line to save Goku. I think also this is a slight deviation from the manga, which I, if I remember correctly, which I really, really liked because I think in the manga, Frieza just shoots Piccolo. I really like this moment where Frieza tries to shoot Goku and Piccolo is the one who pushes him out of the way. I like it a lot. I like... I like this version better than the manga. Just hearing that, I like this version a a whole heck of a lot more. There's more character in it, right? And on top of that, it's there's a certain element of tragedy to Piccolo's story arc where he kind of becomes a good guy on the back burner and never really gets to to harvest the fruits of his labor there. It's it's he's a changed person, but no one ever really notices it. No one really celebrates it. At least at this point, he just, he makes the right decision. He makes the sacrifice. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's clearly Gohan clearly cares about Piccolo as we get a great delivery for the, the scream of just agony from Gohan in seeing his mentor get laid low one more time. And this, I I mean, we get some great dialogue or some great, like, just anger from Goku and Sean Schemmel here. And then Frieza kind of continues saying, like, I'm next, I'm going to kill your friend here, Krillin, as he kind of like latches on to Krillin, as they're all trying to get ready to just, Goku's yelling at them to get out of here. And Frieza's like, you're not getting away. Yeah, Goku, he's he's clenching his knuckles in rage and he's telling Krillin and Gohan to take his ship and get off the planet. And Gohan's protesting. And this is where we hear Goku's voice turns deathly serious as he commands them not to argue, as he commands his son not to argue with them and to get back to the ship. And it's during this argument that Frieza seizes the opportunity And this is where Krillin is grabbed with some sort of key technique and lifted high up into the air. And we see his life end in a fiery explosion right before everyone's eyes. This whole scene is incredible. I actually made a note of one of the the pieces of dialogue that Goku says to Gohan because Goku yells at Gohan to snap out of it uh, because Gohan's just like stunned. And then uh, when Gohan says, like, no, uh, we're going to stay and fight, Goku says, none of you have enough strength left. The only thing you do is get in the way, which is like, it's almost uncharacteristic of Goku to say that so, so savagely to his son. But I think the circumstances here are just so dire and the emotions are so raw that Goku is just like, I don't have time to to be mindful of your emotions here. You need to get the fuck out of here right now. Like, I need you alive. I don't care if you're upset. I don't care if this hurts your feelings. You need to leave. And I mean, gosh, just look at that that second of arguing that happened right there. Krillin died in that second, in that one second of protest. That It's those kinds of, of hesitations that can cause people to lose their lives or battles to be lost. Yeah, yeah. And Goku knows that. I mean, that's why he was yelling at them to get out of there. And with Piccolo dying, Krillin dead, Frieza just laughs and says, I think the brat should go next. And this is I'm. this is a horror movie scene, isn't it? It's all of our heroes just defenseless being picked off one by one. This is. I mean, this is like a Trunks timeline kind of scenario. This is ruthless, man. And Frieza, I mean, the the delivery by Frieza, the dialogue from Frieza, Frieza being just malicious and sinister. Oh, the, the voice acting for Frieza has been, it, 
It's been fantastic, to be honest. It's been very, very good. Yeah, absolutely excellent. And this is, I mean, this is the the culminating moment as Goku is just outraged. And I love some of the dialogue changes here as we get Goku. I mean, I had to write some of this down because he's just, you ruthless, heartless bastard. I will make you suffer. It's, oh, Sean Schemmel. Mwah, so good. It's, I mean, Goku saying he wants to make somebody suffer. That is so against everything we've ever seen about from Goku. He wants to defeat people, beat them, but to make somebody suffer is just a whole new level for our hero. That's what I love about this scene. And the this uh, I was complaining about some of the changes about like the fighting dialogue. This dialogue so much better than the original dub. I I love seeing Goku actually angry and verbally taking that out on frieza yeah and i like it too because it it shows more depth to goku's character right it shows that he can be that wrathful monster and that he can be something outside of what we normally see there's more there to that character that i mean it it took somebody like frieza to to draw out and i think it's good writing i agree with you i do like this dialogue because it's almost jarring and it it fits here because this is probably one of the most dire situations that Goku's ever been in. And on top of that, this is probably this is probably the lead up to the biggest pinnacle moment in all of Dragon Ball Z. One hundred percent. And this all of this turns into Goku's fury and rage darkening the sky around him as he's just growling in anger his hair flies up in the wind and then it begins to flash this kind of golden yellow color and lightning strikes down the waves begin to rock and roll around him and this is where the true legendary super saiyan is born as Sean Schemmel gives one more amazing scream. And we see what a real Super Saiyan looks like as his hair shoots up full gold, golden aura surrounding him. And he just turns a death stare with those blue green eyes on Frieza. This is a hell of an ending to an episode. <laughs> oh my gosh. My. When I think about what a Super Saiyan should should feel like and mean, it's this scene right here. All the effort, all the the struggle and pain that Goku went through to achieve that level. I think later in Dragon Ball, you lose some of that. But re-watching through this scene, I get why the Super Saiyan form is so meaningful in Dragon Ball. Why it will always hold a, a soft spot in my heart. Because there's so much buildup and there's so much foreshadowing about this moment that they, you know, they put all the breadcrumbs there throughout the throughout Dragon Ball at this point. And then we finally get to see the the culmination of all of that. It's so good. I want to I want to transition to talking about the bad about the scene in Kai because I don't want to end on a negative note because I think People could probably tell in our voices how uh, how excited, I mean, me in particular, but how excited we both are about this scene because it's such a big moment in Dragon Ball in anime period. So I want to get the bad out of the way first because these motherfuckers drew over the Super Saiyan transformation. They did. They really did. It's every every big kind of poster scene and Kai, they redraw almost every single one of them. And every single time it's not to the benefit of that scene. I don't, I wish they wouldn't have done it. I wish they would have touched up stuff that looked bad and tried to make it better. You don't need to improve on something that I think is already damn near perfect. Yeah, I, I will. I'm okay with them touching up other scenes. 
I I even will like look past it when even if it's a major fight scene, there's a lot of the Frieza fight that got touched up on. You know, I don't think it looks good, but I'll give it a pass. You put your hands on the fucking Super Saiyan transformation. <laughs> oh, I was so angry. <laughs> yeah, they should have left it. It's oh, yeah, I agree. I did notice that, too, but. Th- thankfully I am at this point becoming a little numb to it. So I was able to kind of look past it, but they really didn't need to touch it. It did really didn't need any improvement. No, I, I was very frustrated that that was one of the scenes that they chose to touch up on. And maybe there's something going on there that, that we don't understand, especially because the, a lot of those shots that they touched up were close up shots of Goku's face. So maybe something about the original media, it, like the sh- the the shots or the animation is not clear anymore after 35 years of that stuff being, you know, on tape or whatever. But I was just, when I saw it, I was like, mm, that is one scene that you should not have touched at all. <laughs> yeah, it is unfortunate. And I mean, honestly, if, if the quality of their touch-ups was better, I wouldn't care. But the problem is that the touch-ups have been very subpar, if not bad, throughout Kai, which is just its just a criticism of Kai. It, it should have been better. I don't mind that they touch stuff up, but just do a better job. Yeah, it doesn't look good. It looks like they drew over top of it with a bunch of markers. Like It, it just looks kind of ridiculous. I like the color touch-ups. I think that those look good, but when they fully redraw a scene, it does not look good at all. No, it doesn't, which it's unfortunate that they chose this this scene to do it. They they could have left it, but you're right. There could be background factors that we're unaware of, and so they had to do it. But at the same time, just do it better if you if you have to do it. Come on. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I was talking up the dialogue because I really like the writing in this scene. I, the touch-up is, is my is my one like really big critique about the scene in Kai. I wanted to get that part out of the way so that we can talk about the good because the dialogue changes here are phenomenal. The, the vocal deliveries are excellent. We don't get the ridiculous line from Frieza when Krillin dies of pop goes the weasel. I I know you hate that line. I know you hate it. (laughs) Fucking hate it. It makes no goddamn sense. And it sounds so (laughs) stupid. (laughs) I don't really like it either, but it does not bother me as much as it bothers you. (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it is an improvement. I do agree. Actually, honestly, I was looking for it because I know how much you hate it. So I was keeping an eye out for it. <laughs> I'm so glad they changed it. Oh, I hate that line. I um, I mean, I will say this, this scene is fantastic. Just Frieza showing back up and just the horror of a monster that he is just picking him off one by one like that, just ruthlessly and laughing about it. It's such a great scene. And I'm glad, I'm glad in Kai, it still does justice. It feels exactly like the first time I saw it. Yeah, it's it, despite the fact that they touched up those scenes, I still absolutely loved watching through this again. Uh, it is a monumental moment in anime history, and it's it's still a joy to watch in Kai. I actually went back because I wanted to see all the different renditions. So I went to YouTube and I watched the original dub version i watched the japanese version and then i watched of course the kai version and my take on the three again this might be a hot take because i thought the japanese one was the worst (laughs) oh wow that is a hot take oh man all right well there goes the other half of our subscribers yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I, I'll i be honest, I love Masako Nozawa. I love her performance as Goku. I, if, and anybody listening to this, go watch the Japanese scene. If you watch the scream, the Super Saiyan scream, it doesn't fit. It doesn't look like the scream matches what is on the screen. And so I was like, this this just feels strange. Uh, the music is mediocre. It's not my favorite. I think that the 
original Funimation dub has the best music for this scene out of all of them. You know what? I think I do remember, and I think I agree with you. Um, I honestly thought that the music in Kai was forgettable. Honestly, like it felt like it wasn't even really, you could have played nothing and it would have felt the same to me. Yeah. It... Which isn't bad. It just means that it didn't add to it, but it also didn't detract either. Yeah, it was, my thing was, this is such a big moment, man. Like if you're going to get the music right in any scene, it should be this motherfucking scene. <laughs> it's really funny though, because the music has been actually really good up till this point. It's just funny that at the final stretch, they, they bobbled it. I know I they they added a lot of really good like Japanese rock tracks throughout this part of the Frieza arc. And honestly, they could have thrown another one of those in here. And I think I would have been happy, but it was just very bland for this scene. That's funny. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, just all the music they got right. And then right here, one of the most the the most memorable moment in all of Dragon Ball, possibly anime. And they bobble the music. That's so funny. Yeah, it's super frustrating because, you know, I, I went through and I watched all three of them and I'm like, there is not one of these that does everything perfect. Like each of them has a better point than some of the other ones. Like, man, I just want there to be one definitive, like perfect scene of this. Well, perfect version of this scene. Oh, that's so funny. So, like, you have one where the music isn't perfect. You have one where the voice acting isn't perfect. What, what, what? Did you say that the um the original Oceanic dub was your favorite? You know, actually, you know what? I think it's the original Funimation dub. Or I Funimation, know, sorry. Yeah, I don't know if the Oceanic dub... I don't know if it went this far into the I series. don't think it went I, that far. Yeah, I think it, I think it changed over maybe in the Saiyan or Frieza saga, like early on. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's the original Funimation. I think it's the, um, oh shoot. I'm forgetting the name of the, the musical score, the conductor, but the, it, the music for this in the original Funimation dub is just far above and beyond better than the other two versions. Uh, I'll have to see if I can find that track and then just see if I can superimpose it over Kai's, uh, voice acting and then use uh oh gosh uh, the redrawn scene though oh no the animation being redrawn that doesn't make it perfect yeah oh, i mean so close the shell gotta... scream is so good though it is his honestly his performance his performance is really good in the original funimation dub it's the dialogue though that is like That's the better. writing that is yeah it's not as good in the original funimation dub like he doesn't you don't really get the feeling that he's like angry at Frieza outside of Schimmel's delivery. You know, it's funny too, because I'm sure in all three versions, the scene is fantastic. It's just because it's such a fantastic scene and it's w one of the most iconic scenes. You're going to go over it with a, with a microscope. You're going to examine it in and out and be like, all right, this is one of the best scenes. Who did the best scene the best? I had to go look at all the different renditions. I mean, it, Again, like you said, this could be one of the the biggest moments in all of anime history. And so I was like, OK, I want to compare all of them and see which one is the best. I'd almost have to mm, I'd almost have to give it to the original Funimation dub because the the animation is the best because it's not touched up like yep. Kai is. Uh, the the performance from Sean Schimmel is still very good. Uh, the writing could be better. Um, and then the music, the music is, is fantastic. So what we got to do is find a way to superimpose the dialogue from the Kai version over the original Funimation version. That might give us the, the perfect rendition. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had to look up the name. It, it's the, the Bruce Faulkner score. I'm pretty sure from the original Funimation dub. Okay. Um, I really enjoy that music. Maybe it's because I grew up with it, but I, I still feel like it has the the biggest emotional impact for this scene. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'll I'm keep laughing at it. I didn't even think about the fact that the music has been so good up till this point. And like I said, even then, it wasn't... They just could have done better is my problem with this. The music is forgettable. Like I said, I don't think it detracts, but it doesn't add anything. It's It's like... 
so for me, maybe this is a drastic comparison, but think about when you watch the Beerus arc in Dragon Ball Super and compared it to the Battle of Gods movie. It's like that when you're like, okay, you know, this is fun to watch, but there's just a better version of it out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have to make a, a DBZ Kai Kai where we just cut and slice everything out of all three versions and just put them together in the super awesome version. And it's going to be weird and jarring because sometimes it's going to be in Japanese, um, but people are just going to have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. They'll, they'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry, that's super to... fun. But yeah, I think uh, I think I've beaten this scene to death. Uh, is anything else you want to add here? I I had to get on my soapbox about which version was the best and just compare them. It's such a big scene. And I, I, I love this scene so much and I care so deeply about it that I just... I get picky in particular about it, man. <laughs> so what do you think of these these eight episodes we just went over as a whole? Oh, I mean, I like them. I, I think the pacing is way better than the original. Uh, the they they pick and choose the best from the fight scenes. It feels like anyway, there weren't a lot of like reused animations. Uh, there weren't a ton of like just the speed line attacks and you still get a lot of the really cool set pieces from the fights like the you know the kamehameha in the water and the kick where he can't sense energy and goku teleporting out to give the punch um i'm still bothered by the redrawn scenes and i'm bothered by the fact that they took out so much of the the combat analysis like yeah, why did you that, remove that that was probably one of my big and honestly i didn't even realize it until we got into the this episode of instant transmission that so much was i guess left out as far as the specifics of what the fighters were doing and i know in the back of my head i kind of understand it because i remember watching it years ago but I mean, if this is once again a good example of why Kai would not be a good choice for for somebody's first foray into into drag, or they would need like a guide <laughs> if they were getting into this. But like, well, it's happening because of this, and I don't know if that takes away from it. Dragon Ball, man, it'd be tough to get into like as an adult not seeing any of it right now because it's some of it feels like it's a you had to be, had to have been there at the time kind of thing. It's so frustrating for me because, I mean, we're both big Dragon Ball fans. I just want there to be like a, a perfect rendition of Dragon this Ball. This should have been it. This should have been it. And they, they're they so close. Like, honestly, they just need to just don't make it quite as short. Just add a little bit more into these episodes. And I think we're there. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> There's just things that they they either should have tweaked a little bit more or they tweaked too much. Mm -hmm. And it like Kai's good. Kai has been a good watch so far. The pacing is way better than the original. There's just little things that make me not quite fall in love with it. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Um, I think it's a fantastic watch if you've seen the original content. I think that's why I enjoy it so much. And you're right. There are some changes and some things left out that annoy me. Um, but other than that, I think it's a fantastic watch so far. These last eight episodes, I thought were, I agree. I think they're largely good. I think some of that combat analysis being left out definitely hurts it. Everything they touch up, I think, looks strictly worse. Other than the one scene with Vegeta powering up, I you know, tip the cap to them for that. I don't know how much they touched it up, but I could tell that they did and that looked better. But I mean, it's a good watch and it definitely cuts out a lot of the filler. So, so far, I'm happy with Kai. These last eight episodes, I th think, kind of keep pace with it. Um, and I mean, we're getting into the the final parts of the of our main villain, Frieza here. So I'm I'm looking forward to diving into that. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited to do the next part, too. Um... I mean, I think for the most part, I'm off of my Super Saiyan transformation soapbox. 
Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about with this part or this discussion, Dayton? Uh, no, other than pour one out for my homeboy, Krillin. <laughs> That's right. We'll pour one out for Krillin. And we'll hopefully get to see him in the near future. But I think that's going to be it for this episode of Instant Transmission, where we discuss everything Dragon Ball. This has been your host, Todd. And Dayton. Be sure to join us next time as we break Frieza like a Kit Kat bar in part <laughs> three of the Frieza arc. Goku's finally transformed into the legendary Super Saiyan. And he's got a Kamehameha with Frieza's name on it after his best friend was violently murdered at the hands of the evil tyrant. Is this new transformation going to prove enough to take down Frieza in his final form? Can Gohan, Piccolo, and Balma escape planet Namek with their lives? Does five minutes in Kai actually mean five minutes? Find out a next time. And to all our fellow Dragon Ball fans... Stay safe out there and remember to keep rocking the dragon. Oh my God, I got to pee. Please end it.